Hi, uh, my name is Rachel Gordetsky. I am a faculty at DUville College of Pharmacy in Buffalo, and I'm also a clinical toxicologist. And I'm going to be talking today about the various potentially toxic plants that have been put on display at the Buffalo Botanical Gardens Medicinal Gardens. Uh, just starting at one end of the table, we have here hydrangea. It's a very, very popular outdoor decorative plant. You just drive down any average street and you're likely to see it. Um, the interesting thing about hydrangea is surprisingly, within, within its petals and buds and leaves, it actually contains a chemical compound called hydrangea, which once you ingest it, it gets metabolized to the chemical cyanide, and everyone knows how toxic cyanide can be. Um, we really don't see a lot of issues with this. It's just not a plant that we commonly hear about being ingested, but the possibility is certainly there. Uh, next on the list, just going down the table, we have a uh, foxglove plant here. This one doesn't have flowers on it, but uh, it's a pretty distinctive flower if you know what it looks like. Foxglove is in the group called uh, cardiogenic glycosides, and they essentially contain the medication digoxin. It's where we originally got digoxin from, which is a, a cardiac medication. And this one is actually pretty dangerous if you ingest it. Um, just, just a few flowers uh, can definitely cause some pretty significant heart abnormalities, slow heart rate, uh, low blood pressure, and that kind of thing. So uh, definitely something that you want to avoid. Keep small children, keep an eye on them if they're going to be around that plant. Uh, next down the line here is autumn crocus, a very beautiful flower, uh, which contains the uh, medication known as colchicine. Colchicine is used to treat gout. Um, however, if you ingest it in an overdose or if you ingest this plant, uh, it has very serious effects on the body, similar to a chemotherapy agent where it inhibits the division of cells in the body. And so you'll see first affected the cells which divide fast, like the, the cells in the stomach, the GI tract, the bone marrow, and the hair follicles. And so it has that similar presentation. Uh, it can potentially be very, very serious. And uh, next here is uh, three plants which actually all have basically the same toxicity. This plant is the elephant ear for obvious reasons. Uh, very large leaf, pretty popular as an indoor display. Um, and then we also have here caladium. Um, another very popular indoor plant. Um, you see it for sale at you know, Home Depot, grocery stores, and uh, also in Stephenbachia. And it's another very, very popular indoor plant. We even have this at our pharmacy schools, just a decorative plant. And the, um, the toxicity of these plants is, is pretty different from the rest of them. It actually contains solid microscopic crystals within the leaves that are very sharp. And um, if you were to actually chew on the leaf, chew it up and swallow it, those crystals would be released out of the leaf and they would basically get stuck and embedded in your tongue and inside your mouth and throat and it's extremely uh, uncomfortable. It causes a lot of pain and irritation, um, potentially swelling and you um, usually don't see a lot of serious consequences from this. This is actually a call that poison centers get fairly often. These plants, um, these are plants that small children or animals will often just you know chew on. Uh, it usually doesn't cause any serious effects, but it's just caused a lot of discomfort for quite a while. And then the last one here on the table is the common garden tomato plant. A lot of people don't realize that the tomato plant is actually uh, toxic. It's in the family of nightshades along with uh, the potato is another one. Now the ripe fruit, of course, everyone knows is highly edible and quite tasty. However, the unripe fruit, as well as the leaves and the stems, contain a compound called solanine, which is very irritating to the GI tract and the stomach, which will cause a lot of nausea, vomiting, um, diarrhea, and that sort of thing. So definitely not a good idea to make a salad, a leafy green salad, out of the stems and leaves of your tomato plant. Um, again, not something that usually causes very serious toxicity, but uh, you're in for a long night if, you, if you've done that to yourself.
And the last plant that we have on display here behind me is the castor bean plant. Another quite common plant, uh, very hardy, it grows where other plants might not grow. And a uh, very interesting thing about this plant is that it's the plant that uh, produces the castor bean. And within the castor bean is the highly toxic compound called ricin. Ricin is actually a compound which is a Schedule I uh, controlled substance by the Chemical Weapons Convention, which basically means that it is a substance that could potentially be used as a chemical weapon in terrorist attacks. Now, the problem with this is not usually the, that you have it in your, in your garden and that there's a couple of beans that you, your child might ingest. It's that tons and tons and tons of these beans every year go into the production of castor oil. And the byproduct of that production process uh, is essentially high con highly concentrated ricin, about potentially 80% ricin. And so it's very highly available, and that's one of the reasons that it's considered so potentially dangerous. Um, and ricin, the toxicity of ricin is similar to that of colchicine. It uh, inhibits cell division so that your bone marrow, your stomach, and, and your hair are going to be the things that are first affected. And uh, it's very, very toxic in very small quantities. And so it's not something that we see a lot of, again, but it's the, the fact that it's so ubiquitous and it contains something so toxic that's part of the intrigue associated with it. And so, um, in summary, I would say these are obviously all very common plants. A lot of people have them in their houses and in their gardens, so they can't be that dangerous. Um, I would encourage people to plant them and to keep them around. Um, I just wouldn't encourage them to eat them. <laughs>